Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Lakeisha's Story. Uh, sorry, I've been MIA. Let's see, there's been holidays and birthdays and just every day running around because I have kids. And you know, if you're a parent, that your kids keep you on your toes and there is never, ever a dull moment. Let's see, big changes. I now am a parent of a tween and a teenager. Mm hmm. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. No, just kidding. They're good kids. But every now and then, they let their little altars out. And, you know, we have to, like, bid them to go away. And uh, so far, we've had less visits from their altars and more spending time with them. And so that has been oh so wonderful. Um, and it's been really amazing to see the changes in their minds, their thoughts, their likes, their dislikes. We just try to keep up with it all. But uh, nonetheless, I'm really grateful to have them. They're amazing kids and I am glad to um, be their mom. Now, all the other stuff I told you, shh, don't tell them you didn't hear it from me. Good. On top of all of that, uh, I have managed to stay out of the ICU for, you ready? Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. I'm silly. I can't help it. I'm just so excited that I have not had to spend um, Thanksgiving, my son's birthday, my daughter's birthday, my birthday, Thanksgiving, and everything else in ICU. Um, for my birthday, my my son's birthday, and Thanksgiving, and all of the stuff, and Hanukkah, and all in December. I have been in the ICU for the past three years. So it was such a gift and such an amazing, amazing time and being able to be home with Ryan and the kids and lots of crying, happy tears, and uh, just lots of celebrating um, with that, with them and the rest of our Ohana. Um, let's see, uh, outside of that, hmm, things have been pretty boring. I guess you could say, I mean, boring in a good way, you know, we're not having to feel, you know, give myself a shot and calling 911 and like rushing out, you know, or having Ryan drive like a bad hell to take me anywhere. So I guess having that to us, we seem rather boring, but uh, my friends assure me that I'm not boring. And so thank you. You know who you are. Shout out to you. Um, let's see on top of that. Um, I just went to a um, patient uh, advisory board. I got to participate in that um, in um, Texas. I actually got on a plane, y'all, for the first time in 10 years. That's right, 10 years. Now, what I want to say about planes, we're going to take a little bunny trail, if you will. And if you know what kind of medicine I want, you know that's a little pun. Woo! But anyways, take this little bunny trail for a moment. Planes. If you are in a wheelchair or have some other physical like mobility issues, you may have experienced this or know what I'm talking about. So I have um, a wheelchair that I use. You know, it's manual. So I that's my giddy up and those are my legs to go to and fro. And we had to first explain to them a lot that I need to be sitting closer to the front of the plane. And they seem to say, yes, yes, we get it. We understand. So, of course, the day I show up and I look at my seat, I'm in row F, F 20 something, way, way in the back. And my husband is up towards the front. Now, mind you, I told them I need him to be close by me and I need to be in the front. So we got there. They said, oh, we're so sorry. Made all arrangements, changed everything. That was great. So they said, so you want to check in your wheelchair here? Why are you asking me if I want to check my wheelchair here at the gate? When I've told you numerous times, that is the way in which I get myself to point A to point B. And then they looked at me as if they were a little confused. And then finally I had to say, 
this chair. It's my legs. If I don't, I'm going to be army crawling or my husband's going to be dragging me to the plane. And then they're like, oh, okay. So, so we get all that taken care of. We get to the gate, then at the gate. So you want to check in your wheelchair here. No, I don't want to check my wheelchair in here. I need this chair to get to the gate of and get to the little area of the plane to get on the plane. So it's like, okay, I said, however, I am going to need um, an aisle seat so that you can help me assist me in getting on the plane. Okay. So no problem. They finally get it. So I'm part of what, like one of the first people to get on the plane, go down the ramp. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I wish I could have just thrown my hands up and just rode down because it was like a wild, you know, would have been a really wild ride. I mean, it had like bumps and lifts and stuff, but I had to behave myself. So I just was acting like an adult and just took my chair down to the, the plane in a calm and respectful manner. So we get there and they said, oh, we're going to get the aisle chair. So they pull out this chair. It looks like a high chair for a baby. It doesn't look like a grown up should be able to fit in that chair. It looks like a high chair. So they put me in it. I'm sitting in it. And then they said, okay, we're going to strap you in. So they take this big strap and they put it around my legs. Then they take another strap and they put it across here and they pull it really tight. They take another strap and they put it over here and they pull it really tight. So you are just stuck on this high chair. Then they tell you it would be for your safety if you hug yourself as we go down the aisles. Now, we won't even get into the fact that it was like, I feel like I was going into an asylum. I don't know what it's like to go into one, but in my mind, they use those because it was kind of feeling a little bit like a straight jacket. I was just missing like a massing and you know that film I'm alluring to, alluding to. But anyways, so get in this thing and they're like pulling, the guy's behind me and he's pulling it back through. And I'm like, oh, hey, this is cool. All right. I'm like, hello, hello. You know, as I'm waving to the people and the stewardess and the captain and we get past the first class area and then we head to the economy seats. So why is it that all of a sudden the aisle goes like this? And it's this small. And they're taking this chair and now they're yanking me through the aisle. I'm having flashbacks. I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking this is what it feels like when I was, you know, my, my mother gave birth to me. And I'm just being pushed and pulled down this aisle. And I'm hugging myself. Now I realize it is to comfort myself and to make myself feel okay. So I'm hugging myself and we finally get to my seat. And I'm like, oh, thank God it's over. No. Then they unstrap you. And so you have to lift and sway and do all of this so they can get you all out of the chair. Then they lift up a thing and then they want to grab you to put you over. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no transfer myself please and thank you so get over and do a little shimmy and get over in my seat so i'm in the middle seat right in front of me everyone has their own video thing and i'm like yes i'm gonna watch a movie it's gonna be wonderful and great and my husband's on the aisle seat and i told him remember the wedding singer on the plane you know the, the scene in the plane y'all know what i'm talking about I said protect your elbows buddy so he kept them in tight didn't have any of that. We're sitting there. We're excited. We're waiting. Some dude comes in and he's like, I'm in this seat over here. Okay. He puts his backpack up, gets over in the seat. His cologne. Oh my gosh. I swear. I think he like dunked it and dunked it and then sat it out in the sun to bake and cure and then he put it on himself. So I had take my little mask out with a little coffee filter in it. I'll talk about that later and tell you how all that goes and how I make them if you're interested. Um, it's kind of like the poor man's way of making like a, you know, a, a mask that you sometimes see with people that protects them from pollen and dust and fumes and all that kind of stuff. I'll let you know about that. So he's sitting next to me, gets in, puts in a seatbelt. 
he then proceeds to open it close, open it close, open it close, open it close the window over here. So I'm here. I'm doing this the whole time because I feel like I'm being blinded because he just keeps opening up and down. Okay. Give it to him. He's a little nervous. Then he proceeds to take out his gum. He gets like two or three pieces, smooshes them together and then shoves them in. He's just so now he's chewing like a cow with a cud. He's opening up the window, shade back and forth, back and forth. Then he puts on a movie and I'm thinking, once he starts watching the movie, boyfriend's gonna calm down, it's gonna be all good. Who thinks that watching it, a horror movie, will help you feel calm and secure while you're on a plane ride? Yeah, so. He's twitching, moving, doing the thing. And then ah, ah, on the screen in front of me on the side. That was the longest three hours and some change of my life. Needs to say we made it there in one piece. He got out. Everybody else did. I was the last person. They brought back in the high chair, strapped me in, shoved me through the birth canal again. I mean, the aisle to get out of the plane and get into my own chair. And they push us out and they get me up the ramp and then I'm able to take over for myself. And we go find our luggage and, you know, we get and think, get to the hotel. Amazing, wonderful, great time. Um, and at the conference and met some really cool people and learned some really cool things and about HAE and some of the products that are out there. So I'm really excited. Um, I signed a little paper that says I can't really say much about it. So I keep it hush hush. But for y'all that are in, why am I talking with an accent now? It's because I was in Texas, y'all. I guess that's it. But for all of you that have HAE and uh, you're curious, um, there's amazing, great things happening for HAE community. And I'm really excited about it. And there's some amazing companies out there that really love and care and are concerned about us and who are fighting for us. And so um, when I think things, you know, I said, well, obviously you guys will hear about it and see it as they're announced on the news. And if I'm allowed to say anything, y'all, I will definitely share it with you. Um, but as for that, you know, got back on, had to sit for an hour and a half when we were flying black on the tarmac because they had to de-ice the wings. That was not fun. We were miserable. But we were so tired that we were just passing in and out of consciousness. And so, you know, we finally get home, land the plane, I should say. Of course, the high chair comes back out, shove me through get my chair, push me up. Then we get our bags and everything and we go home and we slept in our own bed. <sighs> no place like home. So that's a little bit of what's kind of going on. That was my adventure and I'm so excited and I'm looking forward and hoping for many more adventures to come since it seems like at this point um, my body's calmed and I'm not going through so many crazy and insane swells. So um, thank you so much for watching. Please come back. I'm going to be posting more often. My daughter is on my case, y'all. She is sweating me to keep making videos. So because of her, you can thank her. I will be bringing more videos to you in a more timely manner. So again, thanks so much for coming back and listening to me go on and on at Lakeisha's story. And remember, everybody has a story to tell, so don't be afraid to tell yours. Bye.